morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Thursday. We're not quite there, but it's Thursday. We're somewhere, not there, but almost there. But this Thursday is unlike any Thursday, and it's a very special day because our new merch just dropped this morning. ShopMorningToast.com. Get your beautiful, stunning, and smart collection merch. It is beautiful, stunning, and smart. It really, really is. Jackie and I are wearing everything from the collection. I'm wearing the crew neck in a size extra large. It is a different material. If you bought the Hattie Dern or the Redheads, it's a much lighter um, crew neck, and I love it. I'm wearing it in XL. Jackie wears it in a medium. Yes, and today I am wearing the long sleeve crew neck t-shirt, and so that's even lighter than the sweatshirt, and I'm also wearing the sweatpants in a size medium. But like I said yesterday, I might size down in the sweatpants because they are less fitted than what we normally have put out. We usually do like a, a fitted jogger, jogger, and so I like those to be a little bad year but these are I'm just like extremely short and it was time for a small for me so if you've been dying to just relive your bar mitzvah days here you are here you are it's really like taking me back to a wonderful time of life me too and I love to see it also I think it's the comfiest stuff we've ever yes. dropped like I want to wear this around my house all the time but I don't want to stain the white you know and like yeah. Bruno comes in and he's like With all cone. conified and jumping around like ruining the white so I have to protect it. It's actually really funny like what memories people associate with this particular style of font. For me it's obviously like bar mitzvah giveaways like you had a little spray paint during the cocktail hour but for a lot of people it's the state fair. Yes I saw those comments. So I just find it interesting like what people's point of reference is for this font because for me it's bar mitzvahs. Yes no it's it's so interesting. No, and it's like we're all just connected, like through this font. We are, this font is really connective. Connects our generation, like from all over the country, all over the world. I totally agree. And it can connect with you at shopmorningtoast.com. Very well done. We also have mugs. By the way, this mug, if you got the Redheads mug, you'll recognize the size. It's like a, it's an oversized mug. It's, so, it's the best size mug possible. If you're yeah. into mugs, you know what I'm saying. And if you just want to like cuddle up with your blanket and your big mug, if you're into mugs, it's the mug for you. We also have phone cases. So beautiful, stunning, and smart. Comes in almost every phone size imaginable, Android and iPhone. And we also have stickers. So oh, make sure I'm to slap, with stickers. slap one of those bad boys on your skateboard. Or your computer, like most normal people. <laughs> I'm putting it on my skateboard. I actually uh, had a skateboard um, when I was in college. It was a penny board. And you couldn't put stickers on it because the material like wouldn't stick. I think I'm doing like whole Marvin the Martian. Yes! <laughs> no way, I love Marvin the Martian. I do Marvin the Martian. Um, great reference. We love thank that. Thank you, thank you. Um, we have a fabulous show, obviously, but um, I left my house last night mm -hmm. and I hit the town. And I have to say, the town hit me right back. Good. Yeah, I... You, need to, you needed that. I got into a fight. Well, oh, I heard. I didn't really get into a fight. I just kind of like let someone fight with me. You let someone like make a snide comment to you and then you didn't pick up on it until too late. Yeah, and it was just like, so I was in the waiting. Okay, I went to the bathroom at this restaurant, this like lounge, that is a very confusing bathroom. And if you've had a few drinks, it's really dark. It's all a mirrored hallway. Like you can walk into a wall. It's like a very confusing bathroom. And there was one girl waiting outside like a bunch of the stalls. And I was like, are you waiting for the bathroom? And she was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, are you sure they're all full because it's a confusing bathroom and she's like no I'm just waiting here for fun and I like took one second to be like is she being like a fucking bitch and she was and before I like before I even knew she was being a bitch and like had something to say like a whole minute had passed so like mm -hmm. it would have been really lame of me to like come back with a retort 60 seconds later but I was just like disappointed in her because I really feel like after all we've been through as a city like we should really be more supportive of one another and now, like, we're reemerging. Like, we should be celebrating. Yeah, you would think so, but I don't know where you've been because that's not, not. the that's not the energy. But what happened to New York strong? Like, what happened to all this shit? No, it's New York, go fuck yourself. Literally. <laughs> and I just want to say, if you are a tall, blonde woman with shoulder-length hair who was at zero bond at approximately 11 o'clock last night, please come see me. Like, I would love to okay. talk to you about what in your life hurt you that you felt the need to attack a little short girl at the bathroom. I didn't even say anything and I wasn't being rude like oh are you dumb you didn't look in the bathroom stall I was just like are you are you sure like if somebody said that to me I wouldn't be offended like wh who hurt this girl she's yeah I'll come see about me okay okay if well, anyone knows a tall blonde girl now you've had 12 hours I'm to, still so mad to, no, no no to ruminate on the insult what's your comeback okay let's play it through okay yeah are you waiting in line for the bathroom no I'm waiting here for fun no no she says yes yes Oh, are you sure they're all taken? No, I'm waiting here for fun. Oh my God, what the fuck is your problem? 
That's what I would have said because that's the message here. Like, it wasn't a confrontational conversation until she made it that. She's obviously a deeply hurt person. I almost wanted to hug her because she's obviously been through a lot. Yeah. I mean, we all have. I was just so taken aback by the abrasiveness. Like, ugh. I'm sorry. So you called me last night while I was sleeping because yes. you had something to tell me. And then yes. you said you were going to tell me on the show. Yes. Okay. Please tell me. So last night I went to dinner with a bunch of my friends who I haven't seen. And one of my, me and Ben's like really good couple friends is Jordan and Nikki. So they are enga- they're engaged and me and Ben are really, really close with them. They're like the best couple. And Jordan went to my high school, our high school. And like you and Jordan, when you were in like freshman year, like dated. Like yeah. high school date. Yeah, just like for his history, um, it was like junior year. Okay, okay. Yeah. So he, we were talking about um, your, I, I brought it up, do you remember when Jackie did that poem and she sang Hannah Montana? Yeah, I don't think he was in the class with me. Oh, okay. But it was world But it was, it was worldwide news. Yeah, it was and worldwide. we spoke about that on a previous episode if you don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. And I just was like commenting on like how iconic it was and he was like, no, I don't really remember. But I don't know if Jackie knows this, but like I was so like in love with her when we were That's in, a lie. In, this is what he said. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> he said I was like so in love with Jackie when we were in high school and, like I wanted to do something nice for her and I knew she was obsessed with Hannah Montana do you know this story I, I don't know continue okay so he's like I don't know if she ever knew this but I literally wrote a letter to Miley Cyrus um like asking for like a signed picture or something like you know how back in the day you used to write to like people's P.O. boxes and you might get like a signed autographed headshot in return and he was like you know I literally like wrote this long letter to Miley and like sent it to her P.O. box <laughs> And um, because I just like wanted to do something nice for Jackie and she never wrote me back. And I literally like my jaw hit the floor. I was like, oh, my God, that's so sweet. That's so nice. I did not know that. I know. I'm like, I don't think Jackie knows that. I don't. I didn't know that. Like, I wish I knew that then because um, that's just like not how I remember things going down between us. Oh, okay. You know, so. Maybe you guys should talk it out. (laughs) He's getting married. So like you guys should talk it out. So funny. Yeah. But um. No, him and his new fiance. I'm glad it didn't work out because like now I have this great couple friend and they're like so great for each other and so great for me. I'm happy for you. It's very tough when you have couple friends because you always end up liking, you know, like the husband or the wife more. Um, and they're a rare couple that like I, li- I like them both equally. Like I would hang out with them individually or together. That's great. But I do have a hard time making couple friends. Do you? Um, no, but I, I also don't have that many. And I feel like I don't have any couple friends that I wasn't friends with when they were single. Right. So you, know? so you automatically like the single So it's like I just like my more. friend's partner. Right, right. But so like when you make friends as like a couple, it's like different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, I can see that. And it's actually really fun. Because then like your friend dates someone like you don't like. Yeah. It's like, oh, got to see this guy again. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so I just thought you would enjoy that little piece of history. I do. Now I need to like, like that's just not my memory of the of that time. It's yeah. incongruous with my memory. Well, and actually, a little fun fact: I do believe Jordan's mom is like a big toaster, so like maybe she'll hear this. Oh my god, maybe she'll hear this and she can shed, shed some more light on um, what actually went down like, um, as the adult in the situation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was my evening. Got into a fight and learned more about Jackie, which is. Honestly, not a bad evening for a Wednesday. No. And you love to get into a fight. Like, let's be honest. Yes, but I lost, like, because she caught me so off guard. Yeah, but I would have loved to come back with some fucking retort. Here's the thing. Next time, you'll be prepared. Yeah. No, and I'm just going to be on guard everywhere I go. Yeah, and, and My you know walls what? And are then, up. And then you'll say to someone, no, I'm waiting here for fun. Yes. Somebody hurt it's her. It's cyclical, and you have hurt to... Hurt people hurt people. You have to break the cycle. I will. But I just will be And like, you know how you break the cycle? You let it go. Oh. It's the hardest thing. I can't. <laughs> you just sounded like a 90 year old Jewish grandmother. It's the hardest thing. But Somebody's got to do it. It could no, be I, you. I will, but I just need some time. I mean, this was literally 12 hours ago. Okay, we'll give you time. But then we let it go. Yeah, I think that's fair. Maybe we should have a balloon. Yeah, or like ceremony. we'll sage the room. Yeah. I'm letting it go. It was just like shocking, you know? The shock hasn't worn off. Yeah, no, that, that could be shocking. And like traumatizing too. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm over it. I'm over it. Maybe we should just dive in so I can get my mind off of things. Yes. Let us dive in. We have a lot to talk about. Real Housewives of New Jersey recap. Yes. And we have some really great stories today. I'm really excited to just chat about some non-celeb related items. Jackie decided to change it up a little bit today. I did. Because like, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I get really fucking sick of talking about celebrities. Well, like certain celebrities I just get like fatigued from talking about. Yeah. So we're switching it up. In the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> And today's episode, to nobody's surprise, is brought to you by Bruch. 
<sighs> what a fabulous experience it's been having my bruise for the last like six months. I feel like it is now. Yeah. Coincidentally, I bruised so hard this morning. Like I was bleeding? So, no, no, no. Like I was just going in with my bruise. I was like, bruise, get in there, get back there. And bruise was up to the task. And you know, to be honest, if I'm going to admit something embarrassing, before the bruise, I didn't always brush at night which is like really disgusting but now I've been like six months strong of like because it's actually like a fun thing I look forward to um I'm six months strong of night time 100% of the time like as much as I brush in the morning I brush at night you know wow. and if the brush is good for nothing else it's really good for that so if you don't know what a brush is it is the most fabulous electric toothbrush on the market it is so effective it is so fabulous and it doesn't cost over $200 like most of the other electric toothbrushes out there do which is kind of crazy the brush itself has six unique modes to customize your brushing experience the battery life lasts four weeks it comes with a magnetic charging stand and a compact travel case so not only does it like work really well everything about the brush is very aesthetically pleasing because you have to leave it on your counter you don't want like some big bulky machine it's very elegant it's magnetic it comes in these fabulous colors we both have it in this like soft blush pink and if you travel the battery life lasts so long you don't need to bring the charger they also offer a subscription program so you never forget to change your brush head again they ship you new replacement heads every six months so you're never stuck using a worn down brush head which can lead to bad breath you're just supposed to change it up but it's hard to remember like when did i get the last one so they'll keep you on track with the subscription program the electric toothbrush has a modern aesthetically pleasing design and it comes in trend driven seasonal colors and it looks great on your bathroom counter get 15 percent off your brush toothbrush kit and refill plan when you use the promo code toast at bruch.com. That's 15% off using promo code toast at B R U U S H dot com. Love it. Okay. First story big news of the day Kanye West is reportedly worth more than $6 billion thanks to his Yeezy sneaker business, making Kanye West the richest black man in U.S. history. Oh, wow. According to new reports by People and Bloomberg, his estimated net worth. People? Net People, you know, I respect people. Me too. Not for my finance news, though. I prefer, you know, Bloomberg. Well, Bloomberg corroborated. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> wow, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, his net worth is estimated at $6.6 .6 billion in large part due to his Yeezy sneaker business, which Bloomberg places between $3.2 billion and $4.7 billion after reviewing private documents. Bloomberg also reports that West's upcoming Gap collab could be worth as much as $970 million with additional income coming from his music catalog, cash, stocks, and business investments, including... Kim's Skims underwear brand. Apparently, he's an investor in that. Good wow. To know. Good to know. This is like a, this is a huge, huge. deal. And for any celebrity to hit the billion mark, we always celebrate over here. And the six billion but mark. The six. And especially a celebrity who a few years ago was tweeting about how he's in debt. In debt. And a celebrity who now is making history as, what is it, the world's richest? The richest black man in U.S. history. That's crazy. And you know, I just always would have assumed that Jay-Z was richer than him. Mm -hmm. Because Jay-Z, like, from the beginning has been very business savvy, like, not even with his music, but then with Rock Nation and Tidal and, like, all these different ventures, the Nets, they always said he owned the Nets. And so I would have thought Jay-Z was richer than Kanye, but he's not. No, Kanye. That's crazy. That is crazy. I've actually really been trying to get a pair of Yeezys recently. I have a pair. You do? And I've never worn them. Oh, you have the ones that they sent you? Yeah. Can I have them? I don't know. I, like, haven't taken them out of the box because I feel like it's really, like, a token of, like, one of our biggest successes, like Kanye West reaching out to us. Yeah, so here's my thoughts on that. I don't know if, if there are new toasters here who don't remember that, but just Google the morning toast closed on Sunday. Yeah, and also there's a conspiracy theory floating around that, like, they actually didn't reach out and that, like, we, fa like, From that, that we lied. The former toasters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those bitches. Which is, like, so crazy. I have the email. Yeah. No, I, you know what? I don't have anything to hide. That's, like, people also saying, um, like, I bought my own book and bought my way onto the New York Times bestseller, which, by the way, like... I did not do, but whatever. I still made it. <laughs> you didn't. Ah. <laughs> but um, like, I swear on all that is holy. Like, I did not buy my own book. No, and that they did send us the sheet music. No, for... actually, I did buy like three copies of my own book on Amazon. Maybe New York Times knows that I did that. Oh, I bought. I pre-ordered your book, and then I bought it on my Kindle. Yeah, so, so I got two. So I bulk. I bulk, shit. I bulk bought. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but um, no, we have the sheet. Like, I have the email. You know, all these. Consp what is the craziest thing you've read about us? Like, people who. The thing is, like. We, for a while, had, like, such, you know, devoted fans. And when they decided that they didn't like us anymore, like, the devotion they once had to loving us turned into, like, thinking about us 24-7. Like, how can we destroy their business? How can we ruin their lives? And, honestly, the creativity was momentous. Like, it was 
unbelievable the things people were coming up with. I think my personal favorite thing that I've ever heard or like read someone say about us is like, our business is completely illegitimate. We have all our money in offshore accounts and we have investors in the morning toast who like we're corrupting out of their money. No, and that we evade taxes by having like a shell corporation like in the... I mean, in the, it's not something I wouldn't do, but it's something I don't currently do. No, and it was just stated as fact. That yeah, that's right. what we do. And by the way, the girl who said it, I read it in a Facebook group, she was like a... She works in compliance. Like yeah. she used her work, um, her work, like, <laughs> like resources. Ass- yeah, resources. To like investigate us. And so like everyone believed her because she like had a fancy like software computer company and I was like oh my god girl like you need to be fired like (laughs) using company time to investigate some podcasters like girl get your life um I think my favorite conspiracy was that when we were canceled that it was actually my doing because I wanted to get out of doing the show and just like go and live my life oh you don't remember that no no that was a big one you know I could see that for you (laughs) (laughs) no this is fun (laughs) no I honestly like it makes me feel really famous like when people come up with like these crazy ass things yeah Love that for us. Anyways, back to Kanye and my quest to get Yeezys. I, oh, right. That's... I actually have on my computer, there's a new um, There's a new collection dropping tomorrow for him. And I'm going to try and get, because I want to get them direct from the Yeezy site. Otherwise, you have to like pay, pay markups. markups. Yeah, but StockX has a lot. Like if you I ever know. get desperate enough. I've been on StockX, like investing here and Which there. Which Yeezys? Like chunky well, ones? So it's tough because I really want like the classic Yeezy boosts. Oh, like with the rubber on the sides? Yeah, that are like, like I really want to. Do the fake ones? <laughs> I did, well, no, I had the pink, pink ones. ones. So he never made pink ones. So it was like, I wasn't trying to pretend to anyone like they right. were real. Where'd you get those like, pink China. ones? Right. Um, so I want those because I think I'll actually wear those the most. But like, I also kind of want like the newer, cooler ones. Yeah. But I don't know. So then I want like two pairs. And, and if I'm on StockX, like that's so expensive. Yeah. I kind of want the like Croc slides. Like that look like the Marvin the Martian ones. You know? Yeah. Those are pretty cool. So now we know why Yeezy is billions dollar business that's crazy like honestly i just when when someone told me when i read that headline for the first time last night i'm like that is definitely not true but now it's like when you think about it it's 100 percent true yeah but it's just confusing because for so long he was like known as being the guy in debt yeah and now he's like not only not the guy in debt he's the richest black man in the world mm-hmm. or in america crazy we love to see it. We love to see and also what a I was, phoenix rising from the ashes. What I was going to say to you is you should wear your Yeezys because... I know, but they're so pristine. Things are meant to be worn. And I know. it's like something that grinds my gear. Zach is a big sneakerhead and he has all of these like really cool sneakers and he doesn't wear them. And he winds up like wearing sneakers from Zara. And I'm like, <laughs> wh- I'm like, wear your sickening fucking sneakers. Like, Yeah, but see like... You can't take them they, with you. If they crease... That's true. You can't take them with you. But if he's, if he's investing in them to one day sell them, like you have to... Like he is. But like he's preserve. been doing that for so long, and like there's no sales. Yeah. Did he ever sell those Dior ones? No. When oh that was dumb because like the moment has passed. Yeah. No. They the valuation has gone down in the stock market <gasps> on the stock market X. Shit. I know. So maybe he should wear them. No. Now he definitely should. Yeah. Just like that's my that's my philosophy of the day. I know. Wear your nice things. I do, but like, because by the time you do, they're out of season. That's also incredibly true. Maybe I should just wear them. Just wear them. It's hashtag like, just do it. Hashtag just do it. Okay, I'm gonna someone wear them tomorrow. Should, someone should use that as a slogan. Yeah, it's very powerful. <laughs> Maybe like a sportswear brand. <laughs> okay, are you ready for our next story, little hair news? What? <laughs> Billie Eilish oh. is teasing a sexy new project. Yes. And driving fans wild with her new hairstyle. Yesterday, she showcased a blonde bombshell hairstyle that instantly won over social media. The The hairstyle is pretty sickening. And considering we've known her for so long as the black and green girl, this Farrah Fawcett style hair is yeah. a, a big change. It's a sickening hairstyle, even for someone who didn't have such a drastic change. Like, yeah. And her Instagram post reached a million likes in six minutes, which is a new Instagram record. Wow. And it's because, obviously, because the change is so drastic, but it also just happens to be, like, the most sickening hairstyle. Like, the layers, the angles, the, like, curl. Like, it's fabulous. It is fabulous. And she said, I'm going to give you a new era. I have announcements to make. I've got some shit to put out. So, yeah, this is definitely signaling a new era. Yeah. I'm sure that means new music. It's very Taylor Swift of her. Yeah, I mean, like, she really did not have to slap that hard, like, just for a new era. But she did that for us. Yeah, but I think that given that her... Oh, Truckers for Billy are here. Truckers for Blonde Billy. You like the haircut? It's Truckers for Blonde Billy. Yeah, they said they like it. Um, 
given that her old hairstyle was so iconic, like she needed to come out of the gate. If she was going to change that look, mm-hmm. it needed to be on point. And yeah. it is. And I'm excited. I was never like a huge fan of the black and green hair. It's just not my personal style, but I love that it was like so her. But I'm very excited for like, I think it's what's going to be like glamorous bombshell Billy I as opposed know. to edgy, you know, emo Billy. Yeah, we'll see. Get you a girl who could do both. Oh my God, Theo smells so good today. Like, I've just been in the last 24 hours, like, in a Theo trance, you know? Do you mm-hmm. ever have that? Like, I, I do. You just, like, can, can not get enough. A Bruce trance, I've been there. A Brans. <laughs> Are you ready for our next story? Sure. Some, a little more, like, Adidas news. I guess we're just, like, Adidas stands today. You know, it's actually Adidas. And I'm no, dead serious. But not for me. No, not for me, not for me either, but, like... People who don't live in America, like, cannot believe that we call it Adidas. Like, we're 100% wrong. It's Adidas. And you know what it stands for? All day I dream about sports. No way. A-D-I. No, it stands for all day I dream about snacks. Yes. Yes. And even Little Mix has a song called A-D-I-D-A-S. But it's all dream, all day. I I dream about sex? mm, I don't think they would be that overt. overt. Okay, what's the story? Peloton and Adidas are working together on an exclusive apparel line, which is great news for me because some of the apparel that I've gotten from Peloton has just been really fucking unflattering. Yeah, I mean, I feel like apparel is probably not their strong suit. Like, the bikes are, are strong and they should just, like, stick with that. No, but, like, apparel could be, like, can be and is for other brands, like, a huge source of income. Yeah, so like, good on them for outsourcing to Adidas. Right, so m- many of my workout clothes are from SoulCycle, SoulCycle because yeah. they had really great workout clothes. Which was Lululemon. Which was Lululemon. But Peloton and Adidas announced Thursday that they're working together to create a new line of athletic apparel and lifestyle gear in inclusive sizes and unisex styles. Oh, my God. Also, speaking of... Actually, continue. The, the collection was dined with help from some of Peloton's top cycling instructors, including Robin Arzon, Ali Love, and, oh, Cody, cool. and Cody Rigsby, my fave. I've been sending you his stuff. Yes, we're big fans. And he's so Claudia's cup of tea. Speaking of, like, inclusivity sizing news, I read the weirdest story that I just had to double check. Ann Taylor Loft plans on cutting their plus-size clothing by the fall, like just getting rid of it. I heard about that. Isn't that so weird? Yeah. Did like, they put out a statement or something? So somebody tweeted like, hey, Loft, is it true you're discontinuing your plus line? They responded, unfortunately, due to ongoing business challenges, we've had to make some difficult decisions, which does impact our plus collections. Come fall, our size offering will be double zero to 18, aka extra, extra small to extra, extra large. We sincerely apologize for any disappointment. Um, that's just like kind of lame. Like, why is that the first thing to go? You know, when like business is bad. Yeah. And I think, like, as far as I know, Loft has kind of been like um, very consistent in their plus size and like really reliable. Like, people have always just like, and I can't imagine that it's actually good for business to cut your plus. Like, m- the average woman woman in America is a size sixteen. So, like, what are you doing? Damn. Well, you just can get you can get Peloton Adidas apparel. Yeah, that's cool. The merchandise will include shorts, hoodies, tees, crew necks, sports bras, jogger pants, retails anywhere between 30 and Are the and joggers she by Sheree? September. Spring, <laughs> summer. Okay, just because if they're not, I, I don't, don't want, want it. them. I don't want it. Beginning on March 25th, they'll be for sale on both companies' websites. So if that's you're cool. interested, I think that is pretty cool. I feel like I'm going to start buying some more. Like, if it's good stuff, like, why not be wearing Peloton merch? It's, you know, that's, it's cool. that's my source of... That's my primary source of exercise. I mean, there is Pelotoaster merch, so it should only be fair that there's actual Peloton merch. The Pelotoasters, shout out to you guys, are just such a great community. I agree. Very empowering. Be so empowering. Very uplifting. Okay, you ready for our next story? I'm, re- I'm ready. Come and find me. That used to be our fucking jam. Yeah. Who sings that song? Cheryl Crow. No. Shania Twain. No, I think it's just like Sherry. Yeah, Sherry. I knew. That's what it's said. Yeah, Cheryl Crow <laughs> would never. No. What's your favorite Cheryl Crow song? Um. On the count of three, ready? No, I'm not ready. I'm okay. not ready. I need to look at her catalog. The first cut. No, that's my least the... favorite one. What? That's my least favorite one. I'll give you my favorite one. Okay, I'm Baby going to her catalog. And... Also, Ugh. like, has anyone ever seen Cheryl Crow and Jewel in the same room? No, because they're literally the same person. No. Okay, here are the good ones. If it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. I'm gonna 
soak up the sun. I'm gonna tell everyone to lighten up. I'm gonna tell them that I got no one to blame. That's a great fucking song. Okay, and then all I wanna do is have some fun. Don't know it. Nope. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, but does she sing Photograph with Nickelback? No, she Wait. Has, she has a song about. Wait. She has a song Wait. about a photograph. Wait. She has a song about a photograph. What? No. Oh my God, Jackie. Photograph is a Nickelback like solo endeavor through and through. She has a song about a picture with Kid Rock. Same thing. No. So not the picture, same thing. Picture, photograph, same thing. No, Kid Rock, Nickelback, same vibe. Photograph, that's like comparing a song to the national anthem. Like, you just can't be done. I know, but I meant picture, and if you heard the song, you would know it. And I think... No, I, I know think the for, song. I think for those who are listening, they they see how I got from A to B. Oh, obviously I see it, but I just can't believe like you would ever like not like fully understand the scope of No, photograph. I understand the, sco- the scope of photograph, and I thought maybe like they brought her in for a remix or something, but I also didn't think it... Like, I was thinking it through. Okay. I was thinking it through. It wasn't my final answer. Okay. Okay. It wasn't my final answer. Okay. Okay, next up, a little makeup news. A little interesting makeup in the Q news. People are buying more above-the-mask makeup during the pandemic, Mm. the Ulta CEO says. Above-the-mask makeup, like eyeliner, mascara, and brow products, did well during the pandemic. Other categories that fare well included skincare, clean beauty, hair care, and fragrance, the CEO of Ulta told CNBC. That's actually so interesting and on point. Now that I think about it, and I realized this the other day, I haven't bought a new lipstick in well over a year. Yeah, that's true. I actually feel like makeup more so than any other industry like wasn't as impacted by covid just because i think people like were desperate to feel like themselves at home and like kept their makeup routine for like for the work day yeah i know i i think that a lot of people like definitely scale back on makeup but so much about like buying makeup isn't about what you actually wear every day it's like fun palettes and yeah you know it's so it's because it, a lot of people just like collect makeup and don't even use it yeah I'm done doing that, by the Me way. Me too. It's so wasteful, and it just sits there and expires. No, and, like, I have all these palettes, and I don't need them. And I, I hold on to them because I'm like, one day, like, when we're doing our Halloween Jonas Brothers, like, I'm going to need it. Yeah. No, I also used to hold on to, like, all of the packaging that my Kylie Cosmetics came in because I just thought it was so cute. Goodbye. Yeah, that's silly, holding on to like, packaging. Like, the lip kit, um... Box. Pop peppermint. No, no, the box that it, like when you buy a lip kit, it comes in like a Kylie box. Oh, um, so like cute. the Unicarton. Yeah, and that's I, crazy. And I have to start getting rid of those things. Yeah, no, I just like hate having like an outpouring of makeup. It's just like so wasteful and so unnecessary. Yeah. So above the eye makeup. And I also feel like above the mask brands, like specifically makeup brands, like really could scale back in their packaging when it comes to like PR. Like it's so wasteful. Like all the confetti. It's like terrible for the environment. Like these. I literally, I'm not going to call it the brand, the big, when I got back from my trip, there was the biggest box, I swear on my life, it was the size of one of these couch cushions. Guess what was inside? Hmm. Two cartons of ice cream. Because it had like this big freezer and this dry ice. And I'm like, this is so fucking wasteful. Like for two, I couldn't, oh, and they packaged it so poorly. The carton of ice cream was open and the whole thing was melted on. Like it was, I had to throw the whole thing away. It's just so wasteful. Well, that's also because you were away. The carton was the no. The carton was open. Oh, oh. It spilled out. Oh, I thought the dry ice melted by the no, time you got home. No, just so wasteful. Like I feel like a lot of brands like really need to scale the fuck back. Like you can send, and also like okay, you have a new foundation coming out. Like you don't need to send the person all forty shades. They probably only need three to five. Like to figure out which one's theirs. Right, or you could ask them in advance. Right, like it's like what does a person of one skin tone need? Like ten other. Like it's just so stupid. Yeah, I hear that. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? Fifth and final. A little tech competition news. Okay. YouTube's TikTok competitor hits the U.S. What is it called? Shorts. On Thursday, the company said it's expanding the beta program for its short form video offering called Shorts to the U.S. now and over the next several weeks. Previously, it tested the product only in India. Globally, users have been able to view Shorts but not create them. YouTube says its feature allows social media creators to shoot short, catchy videos using nothing but their mobile phones. Sounds familiar. It offers a way to string multiple clips together, add music, and use a timer and countdown to record videos hands-free. That's literally what TikTok is. 
features currently available on TikTok? I mean, I literally like just hit 100,000 followers on TikTok. Like, please, can we stop with this rat race? Like, I'm I'm a 26 year old woman. Like, I cannot keep up with all these apps. Like, yeah. Reels is like already so stupid, but I'm just like using it as I see fit, and it's just exhausting. Like, to keep up as a millennial, like, relax. Yeah, I'm exhausted. I mean- I really do. Reels has been around for a while now, and I really don't think that it has posed any sort of threat to TikTok. And also, I read somewhere that the Instagram algorithm was going to be like not prioritizing videos that have a TikTok watermark. Or that, oh, what assholes. or that are like not great quality, which means you like saved, saved it, from it TikTok. and re-uploaded it. So they're really going hard. That's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to steal TikTok's idea and people, okay, we're playing the game. Like, we're uploading our TikToks. That's what we did with Instagram stories. We were saving our, ins- our Snapchat stories and uploading them to Instagram stories until most of us just eventually left Snapchat behind. Right, because Instagram stories, at the end of the day, were better products. So yeah, why they don't did you better. create a better product? Why don't you, like, innovate yeah. something that makes Reels more compelling than TikTok? Oh, my God. Like, that's so fucking lame of them. And this shorts thing, like, Girl, you are too late, shorts. Go home. You're drunk. Like, (laughs) we've settled this debate. Instagram tried. If Instagram can't copy you, really, YouTube, like, good luck. Like, Instagram is the best at copying people. And they weren't successful. So you're not going to be shorts. But do you think that YouTube creators, that there will be some sort of way? Incentive. Or it's like, if you have a lot of subscribers on YouTube, maybe somehow that translates over to shorts? I don't know. Like, you can spend a lot of money on talent and, and... content a la Triller, which is TikTok's biggest competitor. They literally pay for all those sway boys. They live in a house that has Triller everywhere. Like they spend insane amounts of money on creators to be on their platform, like JLo's on it. And still like nobody fucking cares. No, but I'm not even talking about spending money, but like if your shorts profile is connected to your YouTube page where you are a creator with millions of subscribers, wouldn't you want to utilize shorts because you're already like the biggest like yes influencer. but most of those enormous tiktoker um, enormous youtubers are on tiktok and have more followers on tiktok than they even have on youtube Ooh, so the like thickens. the plot yeah like it, it, it's too late like can everyone just leave it alone like it, the ecosystem the way it is now is good like we're happy like we're fine we're all just like living like leave us alone yeah it's not like the streaming wars like more more streaming services like benefit us. More apps, I don't feel like I'm benefiting. No, because I'm con- we're the ones who are creating the content. So you're just like spreading the creator thinner and thinner. Right. And I just think that like the way it is now, like TikTok won. Like everyone needs to stop coming for its neck. Like it won. Yeah. Leave I mean, on. anything can happen though. Yeah. Because I would have said Snapchat won. Yeah, of course. There were a few years of, of Snapchat. Yeah, but I just feel like the way that Instagram annihilated Snapchat over the course of like a month was so crazy to me. Well, I'll tell you what it was. There were things about the user experience on Snapchat that were kind of infuriating. And like that Snapchat, one line of text. Yeah, and Snapchat like wouldn't listen. Uh-huh. When, and, and then we went to Instagram stories and like every time someone had a thought about like, oh, it'd be better if the next day. It'd be better if we could add a swipe up link. Like they just kept right. adding these we features. We could tag our friends. Like the next day these changes would be implemented before you even thought that like you needed them and it just became a better user experience. A hundred percent and they have not successfully done that with reels um and they haven't successfully done that actually with anything since and i find that making reels using like their platform is much harder than making a TikTok. Yeah, of course so you guys should sort that out yeah but honestly anyways, like they, they could really use some beta you know users some feedback the moral of the story is go <laughs> go home shorts you're, you're drunk, drunk. Um, now it's time for our Real Housewives of New Jersey recap, which is brought to you by today's sponsor, Imperfect Foods. Imperfections, we all have them. So why do we hold our groceries to a different standard? Get your groceries from Imperfect Foods to help create a kinder, less wasteful food system that embraces food of every shape, size, and physical appearance. Because every year, billions of pounds of food go to waste, often because it doesn't live up to the strict cosmetic standards of grocery stores. Don't you wish there was a way to prevent all that waste? And if you ever want to skip the parking lots, crowds, and lines, and get right to the good part of grocery shopping, Imperfect Foods can help. Get ready to enjoy grocery shopping again. Imperfect Foods is on a mission to reimagine grocery delivery for a kinder, less wasteful world. They deliver sustainable, affordable groceries, including produce, protein, eggs and dairy, pantry staples, straight to your door. Plus, they're always adding fun and tasty new discoveries for you to try every week. 
All you have to do is sign up and create your flexible, personalized grocery plan, and then shop online each week and get affordable and sustainable groceries delivered directly to your door. With Imperfect Foods, grocery shopping fits seamlessly into your life, and every week is a tasty adventure. Sign up with Imperfect Foods today to save time, save money, save food, from going to waste. So grocery delivery just in and of itself is such a premium experience as opposed to going to the grocery store, like finding a parking spot, meeting a Karen, like all the stuff. Doing anything from home is just so premium. And that's literally what we were just saying. Like so many of these industries are so wasteful, especially food, like the amount of, uh, especially grocery stores, the amount of food they throw out is just like so silly. So Imperfect Foods is just trying to change that. And I have loved being a part of it. And I think you guys would love it too. Imperfect Foods is offering our listeners 20% off plus free shipping on your first order when you go to imperfectfoods.com and make sure to use the promo code TOAST. Try Imperfect Foods now for a limited time to get 20% off plus free shipping on your first order. That's imperfectfoods.com. Code toast to sign up for 20% off plus free shipping in perfectfoods.com. Promo code toast. Love it. Okay, so The Real Housewives of New Jersey last night was actually like maybe one of my favorite episodes in recent memory. Like nothing crazy happened. It was just hysterical. I feel like the women were in rare form. The men were in rare form. And that party looked really fun. It did. It looked like a really good party. The pool is really stunning. And I love that we saw last year that like she was thinking about a pool. And now here we have full pool. circle pool. Why is she selling the house if she just put a pool in? I don't know, but I, I feel like I've seen that like she bought a new house with her new man. Yeah, it has uh, like 11 rooms because she has five kids. He has five kids. Like they needed all these rooms. Oh, wow. I guess it's like one, the memories. I think it's like such an expensive big house. Yeah. She is going off to college. Like it never. And I think like that house is so symbolic of all of the. Treachery. Treachery that they went through as a family. Like I think that for them to move forward, like the house had to go. Yeah. I just don't understand why you would put a pool in. Maybe just to increase like market value. Like I guess houses in New Jersey like need a pool. All the women have pools. I'm sure that it did increase market value. I mean, that house has always been like a haunted empty lot. Like yeah. it's a house with no furniture and it's like a, a yard with no grass. Like it's really bizarre. I, yeah. I can't imagine anyone would have bought it. Like it, it, Bravo should have bought it. Like the Museum of Natural History <laughs> should have bought it just to preserve the, the sanctity of it. Yes. Um, but there was a few things to unpack. Like I actually thought Jackie was going to end up coming and... While I do respect her for being like, hell no, like, Teresa didn't even invite her. Melissa invited her. Jack, Jack is not desperate. Like, but Jackie doesn't know that. Yeah, because they did a, a scene, they did a flashback to the scene, and it was like, Jackie said, she didn't even told, tell me, you told me. Oh, really? I think. I'm not sure. Whatever. I didn't think that she knew. While I respect Jackie for, like, not accepting a half-ass invitation, like, get over it. Like, Get over well, it. Get over it. Here's the thing. I still think what Teresa did was so wrong. Me but too. after watching the last three episodes, I have some. I'm just like over it. I like, have some additional thoughts. Like, one, I thought that the second party for Evan, like, was it a, a fine idea, whatever. But, like, the way that she literally, like, the party became incumbent on everyone telling Evan that they didn't believe it. Like, it was really weird. It was really cringy. And Joe, Joe Gorga the next night was like, how awkward was last night? No, it was so awkward. And, like, she had to make another toast. And it was like, at a restaurant, like it was just. She threw us the worst parties. You know, the first party for Evan was in a parking lot. And I know we're in COVID, but like, come on. And the second one was literally in a packed restaurant. Like, can we get some privacy? Yeah. So I was just like, this is just not how I think I would be handling all of this. Like on the one hand, like drawing even more attention to it. You her toast. Cheers to the girls. Evan's fucking at the gym. Like, girl. But like, no, no. But like that was funny. But like. But like it's it was not funny because Joe Benigno says he also heard the rumor. Okay. So now I'm like. Okay. There's a lot to there's a lot to talk about. And I don't remember because I watched them all yesterday. I don't know what was last night and what was in Lake George. So I thought it was, it's just like overkill the amount that she's talking about it. But I did think it, it did help Evan to be around everyone and, and be, be able to be light about mm -hmm. it. I'm sure that week in the house where it's like Darkness. just the whole world think like, you know, so I think it was good. But just there was just they were trying. She was trying so hard. Like, yes, girl, like. <laughs> So now Joe Benigno says that he has heard the rumor. <laughs> I love Joe Benigno. Like, literally, he is my father-in-law. I cannot, like, see him and not see Bruce. And when Margaret sat down with her ghostwriter and just, like, started crying, like, I literally, I love Margaret so much. And, like, I just, I love them as a couple. And they're, they really are, like, I think maybe in Housewives history, like, the most healthy, normal couple. Like, I love them so much. Sorry, continue. Love them so much. So when Joe Benigno says that he's heard this rumor in his house from, like, the girls that Margaret has over. And by the way, he said it, like, not to stir no. shit. Like, it was literally an offhand like, remark. It's like he literally thought that there, forgot that there were cameras there and that this is a reality show and that's going to come bite you in the ass. And, and I feel bad for Margaret. And your wife. Yeah. Because obviously that means that Margaret has heard this rumor. Right. And that 
changes things because it's not just like Teresa heard one thing, but it also still Teresa's in the wrong because let's I mean, go. Teresa's just an no, asshole. Here's like, the thing. Let's let's go under the premise that this is tr- that it's true because uh, this whole time I thought it was cate- categorically false. And I thought like Teresa like straight up made it up no, just to get back at Jackie. Never thought that she made I it did. up, but I thought it was like she got a rogue Instagram DM. I'm sure she gets a million about all the women. She was like this one. I shall take. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you want to go on all unfounded rumors, then let's talk about them all. But really, let's talk about none of them. Yeah. So let's say it is true. She heard it from a legitimate source and it's a truth. The way that she went about it at Evan's birthday party, literally telling everyone who would listen. Is and wrong. Saying it loudly so that his actual friends who have nothing to do with the show still heard it was is still so evil. No, she's she's nasty like she's a bitch right because if she genuinely cared and was like wanting to you know be a woman who supports women like she would have taken Jackie to lunch and told her right or like told Melissa to tell her like yeah no the way that Jennifer told Melissa about the yeah but Teresa's not like that like she's right but like how many she's never gonna look out for someone how many times are we is the moral of the story just Teresa's not like that no it's unacceptable no it it, it, it's an un level playing field yeah but now that it's like coming to light that like it's very possible that this could be true it's like so annoying like I can't even I don't even want to watch a reunion because like Teresa will feel justified in her actions but like still it's unjustifiable the way she did it right 100 percent. so yeah and then also I will say just given like the Teresa I feel like Jackie could have played it so differently and, and really minimized it but she didn't she like, made it like just huge. being like like I feel like everyone at this point just kind of ignores Teresa and mm-hmm. like doesn't tell her them what she, they doesn't tell her what they actually think or feel because they know that like she's not receptive to logic Feedback. so if Jackie had just been like oh Teresa just wants to get back at me and then like we moved on I know now, now it's like, the center of every everything. single episode we're talking about like does Evan cheat no and now it's like at first I was like it's uncategorically categorically untrue now I'm like I don't know I really trust Joe Benigno I do and he has no reason to lie no no no. I don't think Joe Benigno's lying I'm sure someone came into Margaret's house and said it that still doesn't make it true it just means like oh Teresa didn't just it's not just one person saying it yeah no I, and now that we're talking about it for so long it, it leaves people's imaginations wide open yeah maybe there is so there. I think that Obviously, you know, he has a, a reputation to uphold, but I think ultimately if it was, if Jackie never for one second believed it to be true, she could have just like, just like ignored Squashed Teresa and, and just made her look like petty and crazy. Yeah. Um, but about the party, it actually looked so fun. Like I just, maybe I'm just like craving a pool party, but it looked like no, everyone was When they were having... like in the pool playing um, tequila, pong. tequila pong and like, it was like Dolores in her bikini and like, Jen- great. everyone looked amazing. Like I literally felt like I was watching like teenagers, no, like, but and, in a good way. And they all looked like so fire, like their bodies and their outfits. And like, I am very hard on New Jersey. They're some of the worst dressed women. They all like really brought it out. I mean, Melissa Gorga, like her body is just, she actually looks like a teenager. Like it's the craziest no, thing ever. But all of the women really look amazing, especially this season. Yeah. And I just, like, can't relate to having gotten better looking during quarantine. Yeah, totally. Um, the highlight of the episode for me was obviously Jennifer Aiden, like, getting so blacked out drunk. And to be honest, I kind of lived for it. Like, I don't know. Of course, like, you shouldn't get that drunk. But, like, whatever. Like, we've all been in COVID. Like, nobody knows how to drink anymore. Like, she was in a safe place. Like, her husband was there. He just, like, took her home. And I love that, like, no one was being judgy. Like, all the all, everyone was, like, actually trying to help. And they, like, thought it was funny. And I kind of loved that, like... Obviously, I don't condone, like, getting so drunk you can't stand. But, like, I don't know. Like, you have a bunch of kids. They drive her fucking nuts. And they don't fucking help her. Like, when she put that whole meal together, sat down for two seconds, and everyone was already done eating and then, like, left and didn't help with the dishes. I'm like, I don't know how she does it. And where are her two nannies? Like, where are they? I actually, like, really fell for her. So if she wants to go, like, get absolutely hammered just so just so she can sleep and her kids will leave her alone, like, girlfriend, I empower you. Yeah, I, I saw nothing wrong with it. I thought it was funny. I just personally was like, it made me never want to drink again because I'm like that feeling, feeling of being like dizzy in someone's house. Like, And then you have that car ride home and we know she lives a little bit. I think she lives, she lives in Paramus. In Paramus. And, and Teresa lives, lives in um like Fra- Franklin like, Lakes. Like, well, yeah. And so that's a long drive to be like so queasy, unwell. I never want to have At another. At least I have the convertible open so you get some fresh air. I never want another sip of alcohol in my life after watching that. I know, but like the flashback to Bill Aiden in Jersey Shore last summer and um, them carrying him out of the car, like them carrying Jennifer to the car, like get you a couple who could do both. A hundred percent. I thought it was a really great party. And, and Jackie, again, just like with like George, is only punishing herself. She's missing out. She is like, and I understand like Evan might not want to be around the group anymore. Fine, 
Yeah, but like when you sign on to the show, like it's not going to be all good. Like yeah. there's going to be things like this. Yeah. And you need to be able to be like, I know who we are. I know who you are. I love you. We have to be able to turn out the outside noise. And yes, it might affect his business in some way. But um, you can't go on a reality show if you have a business that's so like sensitive and like right, but the reality also, show makes shit out of everyone. But also this reality show brings business in. Of course. So it, the, it, the scale tips both ways and yes. you have to be able to take the bad with the good. So I am by no means Team Teresa like in any way. I'm just like not as like I'm not standing by Jackie. Like she was just like starting to bother me. It's like first of all you're missing out on all this fun all these episodes and just like get over it. Like now that it's like not now that it's th like three episodes later, it's like not that big of a deal. Like there's a rumor about every literally everyone's husband on reality show. Like right, just get over it. Like you'll get back at Teresa another time. She's yeah. not playing the game right. No, not at all. Like and for as a housewife. So even though I don't agree with Teresa, I'm still like ethically on Jackie's side. I don't like the way that she's handling it anymore. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I actually would not be surprised if Jackie, this is her last season. Like, she's so upset by this. Like, she's but, not letting go. Right, but that's where she's played herself because yes. then you go out on My Husband's a Cheater and that's what we remember you for. And you give Teresa exactly what she wants because she's wanted you off the show from the moment right. you Right, and so when you, the more trips you don't go on, the more parties you don't go to, Teresa is getting her way. And yeah. she's just like... She's not seeing the big picture. No, not at all. She's And, and that's surprising because I've always thought she was really smart. Yeah. But she's not acting smart. No, and she is like, and they, they come for her for being too emotional. And it's like, I don't have the issue with like the emotions like that they do. And I don't mind if she cries or whatever, but you have to be able to like compartmentalize. Like this is a job. Yeah. Like you got to get back to the office. Yeah. Like put your big girl panties on, roll up your sleeves and get back to work. And and you know what? Get back at Teresa. Yeah. That's how Think it works. Think of a plan. That's how it works. Yeah. Also, Melissa's shore house is so nice. Like so nice. I actually feel like, Definitely in New Jersey, but uh, Melissa's house, like even in regular Jersey, is my favorite. It's literally so gorgeous. And their I, new basement, and like go through the wine room, and then you're in the poker room. And by the way, they just sold it, which is so crazy to me. Um, but their shore house is so nice. And when, when Melissa was like, this is literally like my heaven happy place. Like the pool, and then the bay. Like it's so nice. So nice, the outdoor and Gorga, bar. Joey Gorga like does homes. So we obviously like made both of these homes. I would let him build me a house. 100%. The outdoor bar. Yeah, it was like sickening. The last piece of storyline is this new housewife who's Teresa's realtor who said that Wait, is she a new housewife? Yeah, that's what I had that's what I read. She's not a housewife yet, but I read before the season that Teresa's realtor is like the new cast member. So I, I don't like this her. This is her way their way of introducing her, I think. Yeah, and I very think negatively. I think we're gonna be seeing more of her. Oh no. Her and her husband are both like equally so fucking annoying like and thirsty. <laughs> like I actually wanted to die watching Joe Gorga talk to him because like it's clear like I, I believe Joe Gorga. Like I don't think he's shady. I think like what he said in the wrong way, like riding my coattails is basically like you didn't get paid for this event or whatever deal we had because like being a part of this event like will bring you exposure. It'll give you Instagram followers. Like we had an agreement that yeah. like you would get paid like you're whatever, but we're not splitting. This is my event. Right. The, the idea that they would be 50 50 when it's like growing, growing with, with Gorga. Gorga. It's not growing with Gorga and Jonathan Steinbreger. <laughs> So, and like he did registration and sold tickets. Like that's not 50, 50. No. Like, and, and hosted a Q and a also he was like the moderator. And when Joe Gorga was like, yeah, you sent 10 guys who did registration and you sent me a bill and I paid it. Right. That's how it works. So he just like got ahead of himself. He's like, oh, my wife is going to be on housewives. Let me like, let me, you know, get 50, 50 on this deal. Like he just got ahead of himself and he made himself look really, really bad. And his wife. And when, when his wife was like to Melissa, like, let's stay out of this. Like you fucking started it by telling Jennifer Aiden who you don't even know. Yeah. No, I really don't like the new girl. That was really a weird way to start, but I'm glad that they were able to like, you know, reconcile, chalk it up to a misunderstanding. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like her and her husband were giving me like such weird vibes because at the end of the day, like all they wanted was the commission on Teresa's house. So they were like, okay, so like, we're cool. Like you, you'll still let my, your sister like sell my wife's house. Like, like chill the fuck <laughs> out. Like if you want something, you got to play the long game. Like don't be so obvious about what you want. So yeah, we're cool. Right. Like I could still like sell your house. Like and make your commission. Like chill the fuck out like take a step back like nobody wants an eager beaver real estate agent like be cool so like yeah no i'm still like selling your house right now i ain't like commission like i have a buyer he's interested he wants to come over tomorrow yeah chill the fuck out girl like be cool yes i agree be cool don't be all uncool but i do think if this woman comes in as a housewife like that's a good adversary for melissa yeah and um and i just want to i want to know what the life of the top real estate agent in new jersey is like like I actually think that might be interesting, but her husband bothers me so much. Like, so like, you'll still let your sister sell her house with my wife, right? You'll still let my wife sell your sister's house. 
like be fucking cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, but all in all, it was actually like a really good episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And Margaret Josephs is just like the queen of my heart. Like every time I see her, I just love her so much. Absolute queen. And that's that on that. Yeah, that is. Tonight is the premiere of the final season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians on E. Very emotional. I don't even want to watch it. I but don't like, even want to watch because the, once I watch it, like then it's over. Whereas like with Shit's Creek, I didn't watch the fi- the final season for a year, and I had a year of like extended Shit's Creek. Well, here's the thing. I think there's a lot actually to unpack that I'm hoping they address in this season. Of course, the Kim and Kanye of it all. I would love to hear about like some of the 818 backlash and like what that meant to Kendall. I think they were done filming by then. Oh. They were done filming by then because the party with the, um, all the cookies. Oh, yeah. With the producers with before was that. before, yeah. Okay, well, so Kim and Kanye, that's really all I'm looking for. And I think Scott, Sophia, Courtney is, I saw a preview that they do talk about that. I mean. Because they're wh- breaking up. When is the sit down with Scott about his grooming abilities only dating 18 year old girls i just think it's something we should all talk about as society but them as a family as well i agree i agree um i think i saw a headline that there's a clip of kylie like crying with kendall about kendall's acne like growing up that it made her really sad what i'll read you the headline oh Oh. okay this one okay Fine. It was a part of their drunk get ready with me, which I've been meaning to watch on Kylie's YouTube channel. That's literally what I'm gonna treat myself to. I know, to and today. there's also like the Courtney one. There's actually a lot. Once I get on a YouTube like kick, I watch all of them, but it takes me a while to go to that app. Okay, I'm so glad like what you thought isn't real, because like I've been trying to defend Kendall and sometimes she's indefensible. So. No, I'll just let me just read you what I what I saw because I don't wanna I don't want to confuse people. You don't want to mince words. It's not a trending on people anymore. I guess. Okay, never mind. I, guess, I believe you. I guess not enough people clicked. I believe you. They're just, it's clickbait. It's fucking clickbait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just assumed it was about the new season because, like, there's yeah. a new season. So tomorrow we will recap the first episode of the final new season of Keeping Up With The Kardashians on E! So make sure to watch that along with us. And if you didn't know that it's on, this is your reminder because, like, I haven't really seen many commercials for it except the commercials that I do see with the Harry Styles song, like, literally make me so emotional. It's, so, it's too upsetting. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. And I think, like, the Keeping Up stands, like, might my, my feel this way too of just like I don't once it starts like it has to end yeah so I don't want to start it but obviously I'm going to be watching it tonight so we can recap it but like I just want you to know that I'm in pain do you think Kendall like texted Harry like a link to the trailer like we used your song no because I don't think probably Ken there's a chance Kendall never even actually they posted on their Instagram so she saw that commercial probably but like I think when it comes to, like, making a commercial, she literally is so far removed. I know, but, like, the fact that they used that song was, like, an iconic pop culture collaboration. Yeah. there like was it another, will go down in history. There's another song that they... There's another commercial with another iconic song. Well, they they love to use, hallelujah, hallelujah, Oh, no, it, hallelujah. it wasn't a Kanye song. It kind of felt like, like a rock song. I'll have to find it. Maybe it's a Travis Barker song. It might be. Um, okay, so stay tuned for that tomorrow. And that is our show. Make sure to head over to ShopMorningToast.com to check out our brand new merch collection that just dropped, the beautiful, stunning, and smart collection. Phone cases, mugs, sweatshirts, long sleeve t-shirts, sweatpants. We got it all. And all previous merch if you're looking to get a gift for someone, some old merch is up on the website, ShopMorningToast.com. Thank you guys so much for listening to The Morning Toast, The Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places where we listen to podcasts. Find us, The Morning Toast, and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. Hope you have an amazing Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow for... Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Bye. Bye.